We discuss legislative priorities in the region with New Jersey's second district Senator Chris Brown. And we learn how Atlantic City Electric is answering the call for help in Puerto Rico. It's all here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Choose to get lost in the woods to gain experience in forest management. Choose to travel through time to understand the past. Choose to soar to pursue a career in dance. Stockton University offers 50 high-quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, healthcare you can believe in. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world, and South Jersey Gas. Welcome to Latino Motion, a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. Senator Chris Brown is the new state senator in the 2nd Legislative District covering Atlantic County. And he's here today joining me to discuss some highlights of his legislative agenda, including one critical for Atlantic City and South Jersey, that of North Jersey casinos. That's right. It's a big topic, but before we get into that, I want to congratulate you on your big promotion to senator <laughs> for an assembly. Uh, How does it feel? Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> it's great to be here with you. Uh, one of the things that I learned traveling throughout Atlanta County um, in Atlantic City at the Union Baptist Church, they have a sign above the altar that says, through God, all things are possible. And so uh, I am blessed and I'm very fortunate to be here. And it's a big responsibility looking out for everybody throughout Atlanta County. Well, again, congratulations. And let's talk about North Jersey casinos. Why is this so critical of an issue for South Jersey? Well, as you may recall, over the past two years, I have fought very hard to make sure that casino gaming doesn't expand outside of Atlantic City. Our friends up in North Jersey were trying to open it up so that they could have casinos. And what that would have meant to us is a devastation to our local economy. We would have had projections that said up to three casinos closing. 15,000 people out of work, and of course, our, our economy and our ability to flourish and create new jobs would have been devastated. So we fought and we continued to fight, and we were able to be successful, and we stopped uh, the expansion of well, gaming. What's changed? I mean, I, you have a new governor. Uh, is he in favor of not expanding to New Jersey? What's <clears throat> different now? Well, what's different is even though they've lost in, in the referendum and we were able to stop the expansion of gaming, there are still things like video lottery terminals and other ways that some of the people up in North Jersey will try to find a back door to bring gaming into whether it's the horse, uh, horse racing industry or cafes. And so we have to remain vigilant. We have to uh, make sure that we continue to protect our economy and protect all the people who live, breathe, and work here in Atlanta County to make sure that they're able to find employment and uh, all they want to do is be able to pay their mortgage, uh, you know, kids go to school, retire someday. I don't think that's asking too much. It certainly would have a major impact in Atlanta County and the surrounding uh, South Jersey area. Sure would. Uh, one of the examples is by defeating North Jersey casinos, as you may recall, uh, about two years ago, Hard Rock announced that they were going to open a casino at the Meadowlands Racetrack. Right. And they announced it would be over a $2 billion project, and that would have been devastating for us. Instead, now that we defeated it, uh, Hard Rock has purchased the uh, old Taj Mahal, and they're investing over $500 million, which means over 7,000 jobs for our local families, and that's just great news all around. So it sounds like it really worked out for us. Uh, do you continue to see that trend of others investing in Atlanta City? 
Oh, I, I believe so. I believe uh, once we've stabilized the tax rate, made it fair for everybody to live and work uh, within the city and shown that there is a path to success, whenever you have an organization like Hard Rock investing $500 million uh, into our city, that tells us that we're moving in the right direction. It's a big deal and certainly spells jobs. Yes, it does, and most important are jobs. Well, we're going to continue this trend of thought and talk a little more about Atlanta City. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. Joining me is New Jersey 2nd District Senator Chris Brown as we discuss an additional area of focus for the district, and that is the state takeover of Atlanta City. So, Senator, where do we stand in that front? Well, right now I know that the governor is looking at the status of Atlantic City and trying to find a way so that we can get back to uh, allowing Atlantic City to govern itself. Uh, one of the issues I had from the beginning with Governor Christie was to make sure that whatever they do, it's done in a transparent way so that uh, fat cats and insiders and uh, uh, cronies don't wind up coming into Atlantic City like a swarm of locusts and taking everything of value and leaving. And so standing up to them and fighting, we've been able to protect the water company. We've been able to protect uh, the larger assets of Atlantic City. And now it's time uh, to stabilize and move forward. So what are the criteria for eliminating state takeover? Obviously, there was an issue with the tax base, uh, with the casinos uh, being overtaxed and all those uh, lawsuits that had to be settled. So what are some of those requisites that have to be settled? Well, that's a great point. One of, one of the problems that the city had was for years it was overtaxing the casinos and they would take the money and instead of setting it aside during the appeal, they spent it. And when they lost the appeal, they then had to pay it all back and they didn't have the money to begin with. So one of the things that uh, we've been able to accomplish is to settle those uh, outstanding lawsuits, stabilize the tax base. And one of the things that concerned me, and we had to make sure we do, is when we stabilize the tax rate, we don't just do it for the casinos. We need to make sure that it's stable for the people who live there and, and uh, small businesses and everyone who comes into Atlantic City. And so one of the things that we've been working towards is making sure that it's fair for everybody and not just a handful of casino executives. How about the uh, pilot program? It was a pilot talked about, uh, first of all, what is the pilot program and how would it benefit Atlanta City? Well, the pilot is a payment in lieu of taxes, and it sets the tax rate for the casinos. And out of the money, out of the share that comes into um, the city, there's also a portion that goes to the county. And the county's portion was supposed to be 13.5. And uh, the governor, for whatever reason, decided not to honor his promise, and instead they've left it uh, vague. And what that means, though, is for everybody else throughout Atlantic County, they're, they're picking up an extra, an extra payment. And my opinion is uh, we need to make sure that we work to balance Atlantic City and make it fair, but we can't do it off the backs of everybody else who's working throughout the county. It, it needs to be fair. And so one of the things that we are still fighting for is to get the 13.5 for county residents. That's $20 million in property tax relief if you live in Egg Harbor City. So that, that issue still hasn't been settled. You think it will be settled soon? I'm optimistic. I hope that it will. Uh, I believe with the new governor, we have a uh, uh, fresh perspective and somebody who's not married to a bad policy uh, as the other governor was. Do you think some of these steps could help further attract more investment in the city? I really do, because the, the more you can stabilize the tax rate even throughout the county and make it affordable, one of the saddest things is right now Atlanta County has the highest foreclosure rate throughout the country. Right. And that's a direct reflection of one, the lack of jobs, and two, uh, people's inability to pay their property taxes. We have to continue to do better and find ways to make sure that it's fair so that somebody who retires and spent their whole life paying towards their home can afford to, to live out their golden years there. And there's some other things in the horizon, some positive news of economic development we want to get into. Yes. Thank you for sharing this. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation. 
Join us online at www.latinomotion.tv. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We encourage your comments and contributions for show topics. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We're back with 2nd District Senator Chris Brown as we discuss moving beyond Atlanta City casinos and overcoming the city's financial issues to talk more about other economic development in the region. Sure. Uh, let's talk about that development. Well, one of the most important things uh, that I am focused on is creating jobs and opportunity for people throughout Atlantic County. And one of the realities is with competitive gaming, we now know that we can't rely solely upon the casino industry to, to when you have competition all around us. Exactly right. And so some of the things we've done, whether it's Margaritaville, the conference center, or Bass Pro Outlet, we've created new job opportunities and, and new reasons for people to come here. But we have to continue upon that. And one of them is uh, a bill that we have been working on for the New Jersey Grow Zone that is to provide tax incentives for a one mile radius around uh, the International Airport. And the reason is we've had several studies that have indicated if you already have resources that you can build upon, you should use them. So between Stockton University, the FAA Tech Center, and, um, and the, the airport, we have a real opportunity to create that, that uh, program and those opportunities for, to put people back to work. Yeah, which is very critical. And you mentioned the airport, uh, you, you look to attract uh, beyond uh, the region here, but you're looking to attract internationally as well? Exactly right, whether it's Boeing or, or any other major uh, company that sees the opportunity. We have the industrial park, which has been created so that uh, if somebody wants to work in conjunction with Stockton and the university and put together programs, whether it's uh, drone technology, whether it's uh, the uh, flight controller, uh, that creates the opportunity for jobs, while at the same time, uh, we, we find ways to maximize uh, our different uh, assets that we have right here. And, and I will tell you that uh, the opportunity is one that I'm hopeful that the new governor will, will embrace. And we're looking forward to uh, continued de economic development here in the region. Let's talk uh, for a, m a moment here, uh, other incentives or other initiatives right. rather that you're working at at the state level or that's gonna pop up in this uh, legislative uh, uh, agenda. Sure, one, one of them is, as you know, we've, we've worked very hard to open the opportunity for Stockton University to have a campus in Atlantic City. And uh, we're well into phase two and anticipating Phase three, and, and the beauty of that is obviously one, you have um, provide an opportunity for an education to our local families as well. You have a lot of kids uh, throughout Atlantic City and throughout the county who haven't been outside. A lot of times, uh, whether it's affordable or whether there's just a concern about leaving, here we have an opportunity to marry them right with the hotel industry and uh, provide them that education, give them the job skills, and then put them to work. And so that, that is very exciting. And I think uh, when we see phase three, uh, people will really see that this is uh, something that's going to make a real difference for the families of Atlanta County. Senator, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us once again here on Latino Motion. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. And please stay tuned. We have another important guest. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. It's been more than 120 days since Hurricane Maria plunged Puerto Rico into the dark, and today the island's still struggling to achieve full power restoration. Atlantis City Electric and its parent, Exelon, are stepping up to help. Joining me is Atlantis City Regional President Vince Mayon to tell us more about it. And Vince, a big deal, 120 days. You could imagine people would have power, but yet Atlantis City Electric's doing something about it. Tell me what, what you're doing. Well, Bert, it's very uh, great to be here again with you. And we're really proud that we're stepping up and be able to send our line personnel down to Puerto Rico to help assist those 30 or 40% of the population that's still without power today. And it certainly uh, is, is, is comforting to know that folks like Atlanta City Electric and your parent, Exelon, are stepping up to do that. What does it entail? I mean, there's a lot of logistics involved in, in this. Yeah, absolutely. Like you know, uh, well, we get we we had a way for the authority down there, it's Electric Power Authority down in Puerto Rico, to make a call 
to our Edison Electric Institute organization. They're our advocacy group they support and represent a lot of the utilities all across the United States. So they reached out to all the utilities across the United States and Exelon wanted to step up and support. Now we've been supporting financially, providing aid down to all the devastated areas since those storms in the late summer and early fall. Uh, but Exelon wanted to support a little bit more with our, with our ground troops now, sending folks down there. So Exelon decided to send about 150 total personnel wow. down to Puerto Rico, and they're going to be barging. They're going to be barging our vehicles from Wilmington Port down to Puerto Rico probably within a week or so down to Puerto Rico, and then our line crew personnel are going to be fl flown down to Puerto Rico, down to San Juan, and they'll probably be assisting the areas right around the perimeter of San Juan, the most devastated areas, the hardest hit areas, the probably the areas that are hardest to get electric to. That's where our line crews are gonna be working for about a month. So we've, we've determined that we've- yeah, That's a long period of time. Do you have any issues uh, recruiting uh, the personnel to be willing to go and spend a month in Puerto Rico? Well, our folks are very generous and they, they are very generous throughout their time and they wanted to help in this cause, you know, personally, you know, with the feet on the ground, trying to go help the people that still have power. I couldn't imagine having customers out for four months or greater, but it, it, it could happen. You have, a, you have a devastation that significant happen to an island, and we have a lot of barrier islands in our service territory. You know, that kind of devastation, it, it could take a long period of time. So our, our folks really stepped up to want to go down and support that, that restoration yeah, I understand the uh, employees as well as Exelon uh, stepped up financially. Exactly. Uh, about over $800,000 went to areas in Puerto Rico, down to Florida, down to Georgia, down to Texas, all the areas that were heavily devastated with these latest round of severe significant storms. Exelon's really stepped up. And it's a, it's a credit to our organization and leadership of the organization that wants to step up, our employees step up, they send funds down, Exelon matches it 100%. So if you send $100, they get another $100 from the corporation down to those devastated areas. So hopefully we'll get pictures back from the crews uh, giving us updates on the progress they're making down there in Puerto Rico. Absolutely. We'll, we'll have people down there. We'll have uh, phot photographers down there, and I'm okay. sure our employees will be taking pictures. Well, thank you, Vince. We're going to continue this discussion. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. Joining me is Atlanta City Electric Region President Vince Mayon as we discuss the Mutual Assistance Program, which is the call to action that Atlanta City Electric is using to answer the call for help in Puerto Rico. Vince, uh, there's a whole process. You kind of alluded to it a little bit about EEI Institute. Uh, tell me a little bit how that process works, that other utilities make that call to help. Well, in the continental United States, utilities will call other utilities, but they'll go through a process, a really uh, rigid process, where they get on the call with other utilities, either with the Southeastern Electric Exchange or the Edison Electric Institute. And there's mutual regions that the utilities are kind of congregated in. So they'll make a call, like in the Northeast or in, on the East Coast, we'll make calls if we have a problem, if the utility has a problem. We, we've experienced that here in, we've in, in New it, Jersey. We've utilized it, right. Crews from the south have come support us when we've had a, events like Superstorm Sandy. So other utilities will help us, and we will do the same. We'll reciprocate and try to help them as much yeah, as you possible. You were down in uh, New Orleans as well as Florida and we've other been to Louisiana. We've been to Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, right. Florida, uh, Georgia. So we've been all over the continental United States, but this is the first time that Atlantic City Electric has ever been outside the continental United States to provide assistance. Yeah, of course, uh, the, the, we could do a whole segment as to why it would take so long for, for that trigger to be pulled, but you had to wait for the trigger to be pulled and the call for action, which you're answering. Uh, and, and this is something that you're prepared for. Uh, you, you, you deal constantly with uh, uh, restor restoration efforts. What are you doing here locally to be more prepared when an event happens here? Well, we do quite a few things. Like you alluded to, we prepare our line crews, our personnel, 
because when we have an, any kind of event, we usually get some advance notice. Mm -hmm. So when we get advance notice, we're prepared, but we drill constantly all year round to make sure we're prepared. We have our material in place. We have our vendors lined up. We know every person, every one of our employees knows what their second role is. So they're ready to gear up when an event happens. So that's just prepared for the event. But all the preparation usually comes years and years ahead, trying to do maintenance and replacing our that, infrastructure. That was a big issue in Puerto Rico. The, the infrastructure wasn't up to par, so to speak, and certainly that's something that you're hoping to improve here in South Jersey. Absolutely. We make it an effort, and we've done this for the last eight or ten years now, spending in what we believe is the right amount of money to make investments to upgrade our equipment so if we do have a devastating event, we'll be less impacted and people will be hopefully be, uh, will be less time to be out of service. So certainly, Vince, there's a lot of ways that we could prepare ourselves locally. You could never prepare for a four-month four outage, but certainly uh, for a normal storm, we should all be prepared. Yeah, absolutely. People should develop a, a plan of action. What they're going to do if they go out of service, and it looks like in, through our app, our app on, online, hopefully people have our app at LangseyElectric.com and get our app. It gives you real-time data of when the restoration, when, the, when you're anticipated restoration time to restore is, and people should get prepared. So if it's going to be one, two, two hours is one, one way to prepare. But if it's going to be one or two days, people should have kits ready to maybe even depart from their home and go somewhere else. So Vince, the bottom line is be prepared. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that information with our audience. And thank you once again for joining us here on Latino Motion. Choose to get your feet wet, to learn more about protecting our environment. Choose to read minds, to understand the human brain. Choose to get your hands dirty, to create a masterpiece. Stockton University offers 50 high quality academic programs, small class sizes and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, healthcare you can believe in. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. And South Jersey Gas.